Hello and welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is well. A few months ago I recorded a video about DxO's Pure All 4 versus Topaz Labs Denoise AI and Sharpen AI. In this video I will walk you through using Pure All 4 within the workflow methods for Adobe Lightroom Classic. But Pure All 4 can also be used as a standalone application. I will look at and compare before and after images. I am not sponsored in any shape or form by DxO or Topaz Labs, so any comments I make simply are my own opinions. You should form your own opinions on whether you wish to use any of those applications or not. But after all of that, I use all three still, depending on what I want to achieve. You can, of course, download Pure Raw and install it as a free 14 day trial on first launch, fully working. So let's dive in. Pure Raw 4 can be run as a standalone application or from within Lightroom. However, there is no option from within Photoshop. The interface looks the same in both instances, with a couple of minor differences between the two cases, which I shall point out later. First, let's set preferences up. Go to File and click Preferences. First, set your language. Then set your deep drive method of acceleration, which in most cases will be the graphics card. Finally, processing technologies. If you want to try out and use legacy methods, DxO Pure Raw widget and the processing free proof calculation. And then click save. Adding images is by dragging files into the light box or adding by selection. So add photos to the light box. You can also process files from within File Explorer itself by right clicking on a file. Pure All will then add these photos to the processing queue, whether as a batch process or singly. So in this instance, we'll add all of these photos as if I was going to be doing a batch process. When you add files to the light box, Pure Raw checks what camera and lens was used and will then give you the option to download and save the corresponding profile, even for teleconverters. This only needs to be done once and only when new cameras and lenses are detected. So if you're using the same equipment on further images, it won't need to do this. So we can click on that and save. Review and call images first and then batch process them. Then again, I will then review them or call further. This is so I can decide to keep files that may be a, bit, a little bit too soft or a bit too noisy and save or delete them further. Then I import them into Lightroom. However, the processing is the same for either post-processing or from within Lightroom. So when ready to start processing, you can either go straight to processing or preview first. Once you've added your files, click on Process with Preview and the Process window appears. Here you'll set up your parameters for processing and output in the right pane. Choose and review which process method to use. When you're in review mode, you can try all four, see which one is going to be working out better. Prime and Prime XD are the latest methods using deep machine learning and AI. High quality and prime are the two legacy options that only appear if you chose that option in the preferences. Generally speaking, the legacy options process quicker than the current AI algorithms. Also notice there are more configurable options with the legacy algorithms. The two AI methods remove these options and take care of them automatically. Next, in the optical corrections, you set up the lens softness correction, i.e. the amount of sharpening, vignetting chromatic aberration and lens distortion. Note though, if you enable these corrections in Pure Raw, disable them, sharpening and denoise and lens corrections in Lightroom, as this may make imported files to have an unexpected result. You can, however, disable vignetting, chromatic aberration and lens distortion in Pure Raw when you let the Lightroom apply those adjustments. Next, you set up the output format. You can have all three or two, 
but at least one, obviously. Be aware, though, that DNG and TIFF files will be somewhat larger than the original RAW file. I tend to output the DNG for final editing in Photoshop, create the JPEG, and delete the DNG. Also notice that a TIFF file can be 8 or 16 bit, or 8 bit compressed. For JPEGs, the slider to the right sets the quality output, smart lighting analyzes the images, and preserves highlights and shadows. Next, the destination folder, usually your Lightroom folders. And then next, file renaming. And finally, export settings. The export options are the only difference between using standalone or from within Lightroom. Exporting is not available in Lightroom. From the standalone view, you can export them to either Lightroom or Photoshop. Once your settings are set, you can preview them before and after. You can preview by a single window and click the before and after or a split window and slide the divider to compare. You can do a full screen, one to one or two to one pixels or a side by side comparison. In this example, I'm doing it with the split screen. As you can see, the differences are quite clear. And when you're happy with that, simply click process now and processing starts. How fast this happens depends on your computer and the, and the GPU or CPU that you've got in there. But generally speaking, I've got a, an AMD Ryzen 7000 series with a GeForce RTX 4060, and it usually takes about eight to 10 seconds per image. The process within Lightroom is pretty much the same. You can start the process by right-clicking a file and choose Export and the two Pure Raw options. Or, by selecting one or more multiple images and going to File, plug in the extras and either of the two Pure Raw options. If you choose the option to process immediately, a dialog box comes up showing the corrections and output methods. If you then hover the cursor over each of those panels, you can then edit the parameters. Once you're satisfied, click process now. Then finally, after processing is finished, you can then import the new files into Lightroom. If you had chosen to process in a standalone app with export options on, those files should already be there. So all that needs to be said now is thank you for watching. I will leave you with some examples of processed images of before and after.